Hello guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another tutorial and this tutorial is going to be a very interesting tutorial because we're going to be learning so much in this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you guys how to design a user interface for the iPhone 10 using the guidelines given by Apple. They are called as human interface guidelines. We're also going to be taking a look at a couple of online resources to help us out in this process. We've got a lot to cover. So without any further ado, let's get started. Here I am in Adobe XD and this is what we're going to be creating from scratch. We're going to be taking a look at the, the fonts, the sizes, the colors and you know a whole lot of stuff. So before we get started, I'm building up my newsletter following and I really appreciate if you guys could subscribe to the newsletter because every week I'm going to be sharing a lot of information and inspiration and ideas and tutorials of stuff related to design. Um, a couple of good portfolios. Uh, I have a lot of things in mind, but I'm really looking forward to building a good following. So link in the description, please feel free to subscribe. All right, before we get into designing, I'm going to be talking a little bit of the guidelines itself. So all you have to do is just sit back and watch uh, the video. So I have three websites over here, which I would highly recommend uh, to check out, uh, you know, if you guys want to learn more or get even more deeper. So this is by Mengto. I hope that's how I pronounce his name. And he and his team of designers on a place called Design Plus Code uh, have put up this course where you can when you can learn all about designing for the iPhone 10, uh, the iOS, the iPad, the iWatch, a lot of things. Um, it's a really pretty, it's a pretty cheap course. It's I think fifty dollars, I believe, uh, with unlimited updates and I think a lifetime subscription. I think fifty dollars per year. I think that's pretty cheap and uh, it breaks down everything that you need. This is just the free version that's there. But uh, if you guys would want to check out the whole package and whole course if i scroll down as you can see there are a lot of videos and information that you need and you know it gets access to 11 chapters free upgrade as long as you have an account so many stuff uh, we're going to get into this a bit when we start designing what well, the second website is by uh, let me just close all this by uh I'm, I'm, i don't know how his name is pronounced but it's ivo mitinen all right, and he's done. He's also created this iOS uh, design guidelines, which are really good, really amazing. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get into all this slowly, one by one, as I progress through the video. And the next one is by Max, and he also has uh, two uh, separate uh, blogs, I guess, uh, where you can check out uh, all how to uh, design for the iPhone 10, the status bar, and a lot of stuff. We're gonna be getting back to this again. All the links will be down in the description. Now, the main one is uh, the one by Apple itself, the human interface guidelines. So let me just come to the top. All right. So this is the iPhone 10. Please don't call it the iPhone X. Now, Apple hasn't done a really good job with this. It's done an OK job, but still it takes a lot of time to understand for people who are trying to understand UI design, how to design for the iPhone 10. Uh, it's going to do a lot of it's going to take them a lot of time because they have to do a lot of research and you know trial and error uh, which is what i had to do um so these three so these three guys are the best uh, your second is your first best option all right so if you want you can go through the human interface guidelines but i would i don't know kind of not recommend that um and uh yeah we will get back to this a little bit later all right so we're ready to design the user interface now the inspiration for designing this comes from uh this free template that i found by my friend uh tribuan um you can check him out on dribble and follow him uh, he basically released this psd i think in 2017 which is almost a year back and uh, this one is the PSD file and this was not done for the iPhone 10 that probably made for the iPhone 8 I guess and so I decided to convert this design to the iPhone 10 to kind of uh, explain and uh, give you a good idea so definitely go link uh, you can download the PSD file if you want and drop him a follow I think he has a lot of really great uh, stuff and illustrations link will be in the description he's around 638 followers so uh, feel free to do that. Now, one last thing before we start designing is we need to download the iPhone 10 uh, UI kit. Now we are going to be using the UI kit, but we are obviously going to be doing our own work in the, uh, with the help of the UI kit. So I'll just explain as we go through the video. So, uh, you can come down and as you can see this for iOS, you can download for sketch, you can keynote, Photoshop or Adobe XD. And we have for the Mac OS, watch OS, TV OS, and a lot of AR related stuff. Uh, so many, 
stuff that I think everybody who, you know, designs for that particular platform will be, uh, you know, will find useful. Now, I don't know the one which is for Adobe XD, of course, because I'm going to be doing this in Adobe XD, but you can obviously download this for Sketch or Keynote or Photoshop. All right, quickly to show you how this looks like when you open it up is this is what we get. Uh, we get information related to the uh, font size, the typeface size. We get the status bar. Uh, we get the home indicator, the toolbars, the navigation bars, the search bars, the toolbars. I mean, we get a lot of information uh, on a lot of presets and also the iPhone 10 screen. And uh, we even get uh, this mask, which, uh, you know, blocks over the uh, design. All right. And, uh, and we get a couple of templates over here. We get the keyboard screens the dialogue screens, a lot of important stuff. So we're gonna be using this. So uh, let's actually start designing. So the very user, I'm just gonna select this. I'm gonna press Control C, Control V to paste it. So I'm just gonna call this a backup. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and delete all this and we are gonna start right from scratch. Now, the first one is the size of the iPhone 10. Now I'm coming here to um, Ivan Mitten's uh, website, uh, website. And um, as you can see on the, the resolution, the iPhone 10 is 12, is 100 and, is 1125 by 2436. Now this is at 3x. Now what do I mean by 3x? So as you can see over here, he's given a little explanation on what this is. So basically there is a difference between points and pixels. So basically what that means is Apple measures all the sizes in terms of points and Android does it in terms of pixels. So one point is for example, let's say 10 by 10 pixel at 1x which is basically the size at which we designers design it for. But the iPhone 10 has a 3x resolution because it has a retina display, which means whatever you design at 10 pixels gets scaled up to 30 pixels. Basically, you would have to export the asset at 10 pixels and export it to 30 pixels. If I quickly show you what I mean, if I go here and choose uh, export uh, and uh, choose selected, whatever, if I go and set this to iOS, you see the selected assets will be exported at 1x, 2x, and 3x. So it's going to export it at 3x, 3x, which will, is what when you, when the developer is uh, d developing the app or the webs, uh, developing the app for the iPhone 10, um, he's going to be using the 3x version of the 1x asset. So you always need to make sure that uh, you understand this concept. So as you can see, he mentions here that the asset resolution is 3x. So every asset that uh, you need to design for the iPhone 10 has to be exported at 3x. Now coming to the Apple's website, as you can see here, it provides us the uh, dimensions. So as you can see, it is 375 points, which is into 812 points at 3x gives us 1125 by 2436 pixels. Make sure you get the difference here. This is points and this is pixels. So this is going to be the size of our artboard, 812 by 375. All right. So if I come here to my home screen, click on the artboard, it is 375 by 812. Now, if you're obviously creating a new project, um, the preset already exists in Adobe XD. So I can choose the iPhone 10, as you can see over here, iPhone 10, which is 375 by 812. And uh, we can start off with that. All right, so let's quickly start off by creating a nice background for this. So I've already added the background, which I'm going to show you. So if I've added the, the um, assets, uh, I have made this as an asset. So pretty much how you want to do this, if I just go ahead and delete this. If I select this artboard and I can click on this button, which says um, add in a color. So it becomes like my swatch if you've used Photoshop or Illustrator. That's how it uh, basically works. All right, so I've added a slight gradient to this. If I go ahead and click on edit, uh, you can see I've added a slight gradient. Now I'm gonna leave the project files down below in the description. So definitely you can uh, use that. And uh, so this is the code for the first stop and uh, this is the code for the second stop. A simple light gradient. You can click on this button and uh, you can you can change the angle of the gradient. As you can see, it's kind of moving. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, yeah, that's how it's done. So the next one is we need this status bar. Now the status bar is 44 pixels in height. Max explains this part really well. So now as you can see, it is 44 points, which is basically since we are designing this at 1x, 44 points is equal to 44 pixels. I hope you guys understood that. So uh, as you can see, it was 20 pixels before and now it is 44 pixels on the iPhone 10. So if you come here to the, I, uh, the iOS kit and uh, let's quickly go ahead and take the status bar. As you can see, the height is defined as 44. So I'm just press Control C to copy that. And I'm gonna come over here, click on this artboard and press Control V to paste. And it's gonna place it right in the center. And uh, we are going to move this up. Let's actually delete all the symbols. Uh, I'm going to explain that later if we want. Just delete. All right. And we're going to select 
this and make sure we click on this align to top so it sits right at the top now if you want we can actually go ahead and copy the mask also all right so i'm just going to select this select the mask all right uh, copy that and paste it and uh, all right so it is we are going to just go ahead and quickly align this all right and uh, there you go so what i want to do is quickly create some shapes to kind of identify how much space we have left uh, all right so i'm going to remove the border i'm going to go and set this to a i don't know let's try a uh, green color fill and i'm going to set this to 44 so now we know that this part of the section is taken up so the next one is the navigation bar which is basically this section so if i come back here here on max blog as you can see it says 44 by 44 pixels uh, and the navigation bar again is 44 and 44 so total of 88 and when it's transparent you can see how it looks and uh, there's a 25 point shadow image now we are not going to be using the shadow over here so we can just ignore that and if i go to the uh, ui kit um let's go and uh, grab uh this one all right so this as you can see this is the navigation bar uh, right here it says 89 but it is actually uh, 88 because i think it's taking an extra space over here as you can see there's an extra pixel but uh, we're gonna quickly fix that let's copy this let's come over here and choose paste all right uh, okay we gotta let's remove this out now what you want to do is uh we can remove also we can select all the simple and then choose delete uh, we can get rid of the back let's actually keep the background for now uh let's actually go and uh, place it right over here all right okay so this is oh we need to put this right on top all right uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to select uh this black let's actually get rid of that we don't need that for now and uh i'm going to go select this white uh, white background Control shift g uh, to ungroup everything and i can select this and i can hit delete all right and we can get rid of this text as well. And we have the RMR, we don't need this icons for now. And we can just quickly get rid of those. And uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a couple of elements, we're gonna get rid of that. And we've got the title, and I'm gonna press now playing. All right, pretty good. Now the font that is used by Apple is called San Francisco. As you can see, this is the font that is used by Apple. You can download the fonts, but unfortunately, these work only on Mac, uh, which is pretty lame and stupid. Uh, why can't they just give it for Windows? What's the what's the damn problem? But I'm gonna let me link in the description where you can get the same fonts for Windows as well. There might be a couple of instructions that you have to follow to make it compatible, but uh, yeah. So um, San Francisco is the font. Now I'm gonna go and. Uh, change the color of this now i've added the color swatch over here so i'm going to click on this and it's going to op automatically apply that color so right now we have 88 pixels done all right so uh, 44 plus 44 that gives us 88 and uh, this section is completely blocked so we're done with the navigation section oh let's actually make this white okay it was white so let's go click on white and uh, let's make it white pretty good all right, so now we're going to be talking about the tab bar that is this section over here, which also has the home indicator. Now, something I need to explain. Now, if I come to the design code website, you can see that there is a tag that says death of the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu is basically uh, this icon, uh, which is, looks like a hamburger. And it's basically an additional menu that you can open to open more uh, parts of the app. But now Apple is recommending everybody to use the tab bar instead of the hamburger menu. So we come to the UI kit and uh, let's go to the tab bar section, which is, as you can see, it says toolbars, which is uh, basically tab bar. All right. And um, there's a version for three icons, four icons and five icons. Now I'm going to be using the one that has four icons because I have gone, I'm going to be using four icons. So when I select this, I'm going to press copy and and come back over here and choose control v to paste it and we're going to bring this and center this and align it at the bottom oops uh okay there we go pretty good we're also going to go ahead and uh, let's actually delete this symbol we're going to go and press delete oh we need to ungroup control shift g or command shift g or right click and choose ungroup and we're going to get rid of this all right pretty good now we're going to get the home indicator as well so uh, let's go and uh, grab the home indicator. So which is this, let's just uh, select this, copy that and come over here and choose paste. And uh, we can bring this right to the bottom. Uh, let's, uh, sorry, align this to the center. And uh, there you go. And the home indicator takes up 34 pixels, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, as you can see on um, 
I have mentioned the website, the home indicator uh, sits at 34 pixels, points actually, and uh, as you can see, it is 34, and uh, the tab bar extends up to 49 points, all right? So 49 above 34. So let's just quickly verify that. So this is what we have, and uh, so we have 49 plus 34, which gives us 83. And here I come to the iOS kit, and I can select one of this, and as you can see, it says 83 points or 83 pixels. Awesome. Now let's quickly go ahead and change the text. So we have music, search, discover, and profile. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna type then uh, music, search, uh, discover, and uh, profile. All right, looking good. Now let's fix the icons. Now, if I come to this uh, part of the uh, human interface guidelines website, uh, it gives you an idea of, you know, the instructions on how to design the icons. But most importantly, what I want to make sure over here is uh, the tab bar icon size, which is basically uh, this tab bar icon size. Now, there are four different variations. Not every icon is square, not every icon is circular or, tri or uh, horizontal or vertically tall. So depending on that, we have to make the adjustments over here. So regular tab bars, I'm guessing, means when there are four icons. I'm really not sure about this, but if you guys know, do let me know. And uh, the compact tab bars is when you have um, five icons, right? So maybe there are five to six icons, it's compact. So you probably would have to have a different dimension for that. So if we take a look at the icons, you can see this one is square. And this one is also square. Uh, this is also square, but this one is not square. It is basically a rectangle, horizontal rectangle. So if I look at the regular tab bar size, the basic size is 25 by 25 for uh, circular glyphs. Square is 23, 23. Wide icons is 31 and the tall icons are 28. Now, definitely you can go ahead and make subtle and slight changes to this. Uh, you know, to make it so instead of 31, you can make it 28. Small stuff, uh, small incremental changes, which can be definitely been made depending on how the icon looks. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I have four icons. Now where did I get these icons from? Now usually I would get them from the internet, which is usually what I regularly do. So uh, I used to, I go to flaticon.com, just do, type in the uh, icon I want and I can select one and uh, once you probably select anyone, uh, it gives you an option to download the PNG, SVG, EPS uh, or the PDF or the base 24 format and uh, you can go ahead and download any icon you want. I mean, there are free icons and paid icons, but I usually take them from the I icon kits. So as you can see, you can get this on xdguru.com uh, or any icon, icon kit and these are basically the Google ones which is basically wrong to use Google icons on an iPhone 10, but this is just for the tutorial. I'm just trying to show you. So this is where I get my icons from. I just copy and paste it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the sizes that I use for this. So this is 25 by 25 pixels, 25 by 25, 25 by 25. Now, even though it says 23 by 23, I've gone for 25 by 25, but actually, honestly, I'd set this to 23 uh, by uh, 23 on all of this, all right? Uh, 23 I think that's I think that's good and this one is basically um, a wide one uh, so it's gonna be target width is uh, 31 by 31 so let's see how this looks if I set this to 31 uh, I guess it looks pretty big as you can see uh, it looks pretty big so I'm gonna dial that down to 28 and uh, I think 28 is a good number actually it is a right number so because this is 23 right so yeah it uh, looks much better so i'm going to go ahead and uh, center this right over here and i'm going to go and uh, center this as well uh, select this icon and uh, there you go we have the smart guides that are working okay pretty good and i'm going to select these icons by holding down shift on my keyboard and i'm going to click on this button which is aligned vertically in the middle and uh, they are pretty vertically in the middle, pretty good. Now, the only thing I did was I changed the color. So uh, let's actually go and I'm gonna copy all this. Uh, we can go ahead and actually let's delete all this. We can select all this. We can uh, copy and come over here and choose paste and uh, it's pasted, pretty good. Now we need this one also, which is 83 pixels. So let's actually hold on Alt or Option on the keyboard, hold on Shift and drag and we can uh, place this uh, in the center. 
uh, right click and choose uh, arrange and choose send to back to send everything to the back now add, I've added a slight gradient the same gradient I used on the home screen I've added that here as well so let me just go quickly go ahead and get this and we can bring this and set this to 83 to show that 83 par 83 pixels also has been taken up over here so we got 44, 44, and then we have uh, uh, 83 over here. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is the distance between the icon over here and the edge. All right, so, so if I come here to IBM Business website, as you can see, it says the layout margin is 16 points. And I think if I go to the other um, uh, web, uh, other websites as well, as you can see over here, the layout margin is 16 points. Uh, you know, it's probably not very big, but it says 16 points, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this icon that we have and uh, move the 16 points. So uh, one, so hold on shift and press once to move it 10 points and one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, if I select this and hold on alt on my keyboard, you can see the distance is 16 points from the left. And there's this box that's going to get rid of that. All right, pretty good. Now, after this is done, basically anything you want to do is completely left to your creativity and your ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take this one line, which there's this rectangle that I created. As you can see, it is two pixels. So you can just select the rectangle tool and uh, create a slight rectangle like so. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come over here and choose paste. And I've added a simple fill over here, uh, you know, which is the same, uh, which is a different fill actually to quickly show you. Uh, as you can see, if I go to the list view, I can see the color codes over here. All right. And uh, we've got a bit of a time indicator, so let's quickly copy this. Now the size of this is set to 22, but uh, you know, Apple usually uses the increments of eight and 16. So I'm gonna go and set this to 16 as well. If you come quickly come here and show you the font sizes, it probably lays down the various font sizes that Apple uses. Uh, it's actually 17, not 16, my bad. So anything around 16, 13, 10, these kind of weird, odd numbers, always Apple trying to be different. We could use any one of this, so I'm probably gonna set 17 so as you can see I've set the uh, uh, the size to 17 and 17 over here as well uh, the next thing is all these icons I'm just gonna copy this come over here and choose paste because I'm not gonna show you like how to do this uh, it's to get the text it's pretty simple get the text tool and then just type in uh, believer whatever text you want and uh, yeah and we can increase the size so the size for this I've set it to 32 uh, which is uh, which we can set it to 34 actually if you want so let's actually set that to 34 all right, and uh, this is again 20. We can probably set this to 17. All right, we can do a lot of stuff. All right, I think this looks much better than uh, this version over here. And we have, I've set this icons to 16 pixels. Now the icons definitely, you can set it to whatever size you want over here inside. And all these icons I get, I got from the internet or from the pack. So let's go ahead and delete this one. All right, and uh, now we're gonna, we have this last thing, uh, which is basically the, the graphic for the song. So quickly, I'm going to show you how I did this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle. All right. And I'm going to come over here actually. And uh, I'm going to go and set the grid to a layout grid, which means I'm going to end up getting this kind of a grid, which is really useful. And I'm going to select the rectangle tool. come over here. It is going to snap to the grid. Hold down shift. So it uh, becomes a square and I'm going to go and uh, release it as soon as it touches both the edges. I'm going to get rid of the border and I'm going to give it a rounding of, uh, let's say eight. Uh, I think eight is a good number. I can click on the artboard again and get rid of the layout. All right, and we have this. Now let's go to Google and get some images. So I'm going to quickly select this one, which is Imagine Dragons Friction. Uh, I'm going to come over here and put this and drop that over there. And as you can see, it automatically attaches it. And if I want, I can even double click on it and increase the size of it if I want it to fit the screen, which is a pretty cool. So I'm going to quickly call this uh, Friction. All right, and as you can see, I've had a little bit of glow. Uh, so to quickly show you how I did that, I've set an object blur over here to 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, press Control C and press Control V to paste. So now I have two copies. Um, I'm going to go and set this to object blur and set the amount to 30. All right. And then I'm going to go and just move this down 10 pixels or 20 pixels and right click, uh, arrange and choose center back. All right. Now you can see this kind of a 
subtle uh, drop shadow of the picture so uh all right now if you had a different color obviously that would be the color okay uh that's good now uh, let's go and select this make a copy of this by holding on alt or option on a keyboard and i'm going to drag out a copy like so I'm going to go ahead and delete. Oh, let's pick another song. So uh, we've got uh, this one is we've got David Guetta and this is also David Guetta. So let's get two David Guetta songs. All right, we've got a random um, art over here. I'm going to drag that, come over here to Adobe XD and put this on that. And that covers it for us. And uh, let's do one more and get another song, uh, which is probably, uh, let's try anything, I guess, titanium. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, let's drag that in, uh, come over here to Adobe XD and drop that on okay um there we go so uh now i think these the the opacity i set this to 30 percent so let's quickly go and set the opacity of this to 30 percent i can just press three and that's going to reduce the opacity of 30 percent and also i guess the size was a bit down so this was 290 by 290 and this is 302 so this is going to be 290 by 290 you can definitely give whatever number you want uh that is up to you so we're going to select Oh, okay, we're gonna select uh, these two and uh, we're gonna just move them over here. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, move this over here. And we wanna make sure we have 16 pixels. So 10, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is 16 pixels. And let's do the same thing over here. Uh, 10 and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we're going to select these two and bring them down a, a bit. So um, I think, yeah, that is pretty good. This is pretty much it. So, um, so this is how you design a user interface for the iPhone 10 using the iOS design guidelines. I hope you really found this video very helpful and got a lot of information and insight. Uh, let me know if you want more, more tutorials like this in the future. Leave, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe to the newsletter and my channel. Don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.